Hi, my name is Alexandra and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to A Lovely Jaunt where we talk about literature, although today with the help of the Lawn Gnome we're going a little bit further. Hello everybody, my name is Steve, but I'm known in the community as your friendly neighborhood lawn gnome. I wanted to thank Alexandra for giving me the opportunity to join her in this collaborative effort. She was gracious enough to join me for one of my 10 for 12s earlier this year, so getting the opportunity to return the favor was wonderful. While I may not talk about books a lot on my channel, they are very much interwoven into my main topics of discussion, which is overall popular culture. Movies, music, television, books, video games, Games, Funko Pops, as well as important current events and other important issues that I feel are important to discuss for the here and the now. But one of the more important things that I do here is I want people to know that there are certain individuals in this community that want to see growth, want to see creativity, and are also willing to give a helping hand for anyone who needs it. So without further ado, let me get you back to Alexandra, and we'll continue on with this video. So like Steve said, in today's video, we're going to take a look at some two different storytelling mediums, um, the medium of film and the medium of literature and what they do similarly and where they have different strengths and weaknesses. When I first started my booktube channel, I think I drew a lot of inspiration from film analytical channels that I found on YouTube that I really enjoyed watching, who really analyzed the storytelling medium of film on a deep level, and I thought, oh, I could do that with books because that's what I enjoy reading. I'm actually not very much of a TV or f film person. I don't own a TV and I don't watch a lot of movies. And I've been so out of the loop of like what's going on in TV that I often don't know what recent movies are. But The Lawn Gnome and I have collaborated previously and he his channel obviously fo focuses more on film and music media than literature. And so we're looking at ways where we might be able to speak to our audiences kind of in a fresh way. So I came up with a set of questions for us both to answer and share our perspective on him coming from more of a film background, me coming from more of a literary background, and I thought it would be really interesting to see how our answers might differ from each other. So the first question is, what is your favorite film or TV adaptation of a book and what made it successful? I think for me, one of my favorite TV adaptations of a book is the classic A&E version of Pride and Prejudice with Colin Firth. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying that it is the best adaptation of a book to film. It's just my favorite because I love watching it so much. I, for a while I had two copies and I have watched it many, many times over and over again. And I just love the um, characterization. I think they really nailed the characterization of Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet. What I think is the most successful film adaptation of a book is actually Breakfast at Tiffany's. And in fact, it's one of the few movies that I think is actually better than the book. And I think one of the reasons why it's more successful than the book in my own mind, and something that I didn't realize in, because I had seen the movie before I read the book, and in fact, really the movie is more famous, I think, than the book, which is not always the case, is that the book is not necessarily a story, it's more of a character study of this character, Holly Golightly, who is this enigmatic, charismatic, attractive, vulnerable character. And I really love Audrey Hepburn as an actress, as I'm sure many people do, and I thought she really captured that vulnerability, but what the film script brought to the table that the book was really lacking was that coherent narrative arc that made put her character into a compelling context. Um, and so that is probably the best film adaptation of a book that I've ever seen, because it took something that was really lovely in in literary form, but took it even beyond what had been accomplished uh, on the page. Question number two is, are book lovers too harsh on movie adaptations? Are there things that we overlook when judging the film and that we should take into consideration? And I absolutely think that this is true. I think that as a book lover myself, I find myself falling into this trap where I'm not recognizing the 
relative strengths and weaknesses of the two different mediums. When I go into a movie or a film adaptation of a book, especially if it's a book that I really, really loved, I'm always expecting it to be sort of a duplicate, right? And there's no way that a movie could actually duplicate everything that happens in a book. And in fact, it gives us access to many things that the book can achieve, while at the same time it lacks in many areas of what a book can achieve. So an obvious example of that is that a narrator's voice might have the ability to get inside of a character's head or a first person narration might be able to re really reveal the inner workings inside of a character's thoughts and feelings. And while excellent actors certainly can portray much of that on the face, obviously that can't be done with actual words you know, barring a voiceover narration, which for me is like a hallmark of if you have too much of that, then you're not doing your storytelling as it's intended to be through this visual medium. And so recognizing these relative strengths and weaknesses, I think is really, really important when we go into a movie that the, the responsibility of the director is to not make a duplicate of your experience when you first read a book that you read. The responsibility of a director is to take something as inspiration and really to make it their own. And I think that some of the movies that do this the best, again referring back to Holly Golightly and Breakfast at Tiffany's, they expand beyond what maybe what was on the page or they interpret it in a special and unique way because I think every movie adaptation is an interpretation of a work. And yeah, so I think you have to let the movie be a movie and you have to judge it on its merits as a movie. You can't really expect it to give you the same feelings or the same experience that you had when you read the book. What are some examples of how a film can go beyond what a book can do? Now this is really hard for me because obviously my bias is towards literature and there's a lot of times when I think with like visuals and special effects and things like that, one is that they always eventually get outdated and so no matter how good your computer graphics are, they're going to eventually look outdated. Apparently Lord of the Rings is impervious to this curse, but every other movie seems to, <laughs> seems to face that problem and I always think to myself like, my imagination never gets outdated and there's no limits to what my imagination can come up with based on what I'm reading. And then of course, as I mentioned, there are some limitations in terms of characterization and I think you're limited by some, if you have a bad actor or something like that. But some examples of what film can do that go far beyond what um, a book can do. Like I'm still having a hard time coming up with something. I think film can bring setting and ambiance to life in a way that a book has to be very wordy and what an image in a scene in a setting can do in just a moment and I think that's a huge advantage of film because all of our stories are told in a context, in a place and setting and world building, you can just do that with just a few images and just a few scenes that takes pages and pages, say, of your favorite fantasy novel to achieve the same visceral effect. What are some ways that book lovers are right where books can't or where film cannot match what books can do? Um, and I've already mentioned these because of course I'm on the literary side so I'm getting ahead of myself, but obviously getting inside the character's head, really explaining the motivations of characters or having the opportunity to do so, or choosing not to if the case, if it suits, and, and getting inside multiple characters' heads. And then I think, you know, just they're not, books are never limited by what we can technologically achieve on film. So they can make any world, any setting, any fantasy character without worrying about, you know, what are the limitations of our technology or our film art. Oh, and I think the other thing that books can do that film sometimes lacks is having a very strong narrative arc over a very long work.
So obviously like our, our sense of patience for a movie is pretty limited, right? So we're not really gonna go you know, beyond a couple of hours where we're kind of saying, okay, this movie needs to be wrapped up now. It's a long movie and I'm, I'm ready for this story to be over. Then there's like, you could do like the mini series, right? So you might do two to three episodes and get maybe five to six hours of storytelling in there. Or if we move into a like episodic series, then I think that the narrative arc starts to dissolve over such that many hours and such an extended storytelling. Unless you have a really, really tight writing team, and I think unless the work is pretty much finished before you even get started filming, it's really, really hard, I think, to have that extended narrative and complex narrative arc over many, many episodes, whereas a book and a whole series of books, it's a lot easier for that to be done. And maybe that's because it's a single author who is bound by their own sense of coherency. Um, maybe like the editing process is a lot better, but it seems that books can just hold it together. I mean, there's, there's series that are 20, 13, 15 books long, and they just have this sense of internal coherency that that number of hours of television is really, really hard to get. So that, I think that's a really important thing that books do really, really well. They keep the story and coherency really, really tight. And question number five is, should we even compare books and their film adaptations, or should they be consider considered separate works of art? I don't mind comparing books and film adaptations, but as I kind of mentioned earlier, I really think that film adaptations should, of books should really be considered interpretations of that literary work and should be taken as one of many possible ways to interpret that story. And they shouldn't necessarily be required to duplicate what is exactly on the page or attempt to even duplicate your personal experience with reading the book. And so because I consider them interpretations, I always want to look at the source material to say, well, how good of an interpretation is this? Do I agree with this interpretation? Or did this interpretation bring something to the fore that I never really noticed as being a theme in the book or being an important, important to the book? Or perceiving a character in a way that I hadn't really read the character as being that way before. And this interpretation of that character kind of brought that to the fore for me. So for me, film adaptations of books are just another way to enter into the types of conversations that I like to have on my channel all day, every day, except for when I forget to post. So those are my five questions comparing books and movies. I wanna know your thoughts. What's your number one favorite film adaptation of the book which one do you think is like the number one worst film adaptation of a book? And then especially that fifth question, I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are. Should we even bother comparing them or should they be considered separate works of art that sort of stand on their own merits? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, my name is Alexandra and I'm still a bibliophile.